All right, guys, I'm just going to go over a couple of these other problems that we didn't get to go over in class. So I wanted to touch base with you about, we'll do, here's number seven, um, and I may do a separate video on that. Here's number eight. So let's talk about the steps that we need to go through to find our answers. So step one is to simplify, which means to factor. So we need to factor the top and the bottom because these are rational functions. When you have a rational function, that's where you have your x on the top and the bottom. When you have a reciprocal function, there's only a number on the top. And that's what we talked about the first day when it was so easy. Now we get to factor, and these are our rational functions. So to factor out x squared plus 3x minus 28, you're going to get the two numbers that multiply to give you negative 28 and add to give you positive 3. We're going to be x plus 7, x minus 4. The two numbers that are going to multiply, so I'm going to factor my denominator. The two numbers that are going to multiply and give me 35 and add to give me 12 is going to be x plus 7 and x plus 5. When I add those together, I'll get 12. When I multiply 7 times 5, I'll get 35. So when I reduce those, since x plus 7 over x plus 7 would, would uh, cancel out to be 1, I'm going to cancel those polynomials out, and I'm left with x minus 4 over x plus 5. So this is my new simplified equation. And so this is the equation that I'm going to be using to determine my answers. So to find out my x-intercept, I'm trying to figure out when y equals 0. And we know that y would equal 0 when the numerator is 0. So numerator equals 0. That's what I'm going to find out where my x-intercept is, where it's going to cross the x-axis. So I get x minus 4, which is my numerator, set that equal to 0. To solve for that, I'd add 4 to both sides. I'm going to get x equals 4. So when x is 4, y is 0. This is my y-coordinate right here. So I can go ahead and plot that point, 1, 2, 3, 4, and plot that on my graph. So my next step is to find what my vertical asymptote is. So I'm going to write this numerator equals 0. This is where your denominator equals 0. So when I set my denominator equal to 0, and again, I'm going to use this. x plus 5 is my denominator. x will equal negative 5. And what that's telling me is when x equals negative 5, my denominator will equal 0, which is a no-no. So x can never equal negative 5. And then remember, this is a line. It is not a point. So if on your graph you just put negative 5, or on your answer you just put va equals negative 5, that's incorrect. It has to be x equals negative 5. So I can plot that by my good friend, remember my good friend Vux, my vertical line, and so I'm going to go to x equals negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and plot and uh, draw a vertical dashed line to show that this is a boundary that can never be crossed. Because if it was crossed, then that means that my x will equal 0. So I've got my vertical asymptote. What about my horizontal asymptote? Now this is where we're talking about koi, which is my horizontal. And what we're trying to figure out here is 
we're looking at the degree. And you're going to look here, the degree of the numerator is 2. That's the largest exponent. The degree of the denominator is also 2. So when we we're talking about that, remember we were talking about Bobo Botten eats DC. I'm going to write that over here. Bobo Botten eats DC. So this situation is an eats DC because exponents are the same. So we're going to divide the coefficients. And if we look at the coefficient of x squared here is 1. The coefficient of x squared in the denominator is 1. So I'm going to get y is going to equal the coefficient of the numerator of x squared divided by the coefficient of the denominator x squared. And that's going to be 1. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 1. And this is a eats dc situation. OK, so I can graph that. I know that it's going to be a horizontal line at y equals 1. So it will look like that. So now I've got my asymptotes, and I need to see, is there a hole? So where there is a hole is where you have factors that cancel each other out. And yes, in fact, I do. So the hole exists at x plus 7, and I need to find the coordinate points. So x equals 7 equals to 0 x would equal negative 7 at this hole. So that is my x coordinate at negative 7. So if I know that x is negative 7 at my hole, I need to figure out my y coordinate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this simplified equation, x minus 4, x plus 5, y equals x minus 4, x plus 5. This is my function. I'm going to say, OK, well, what would y be if x is negative 7? So I plug in y equals negative 7 minus 4 over negative 7 plus 5. I've basically taken my x and plugged it in there. x equals negative 7. What is y? Well, negative 7 minus negative 4, or minus 4 is negative 11. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So that's going to give me positive 11 over 2, or 5 and a half, however you want to put it. I'm going to leave it in fraction form. So my y-coordinate is 11 over 2, which means that my hole is going to be at negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 5 and a half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half. So right about there is where that hole will be. So now when I'm looking at my domain, I know my x, I'm going to move this sheet now, I know my x has to be the set of all real numbers, but x cannot equal my asymptote at negative 5 or the value of my hole at negative 7. Other than that, all of my x values are fair game. What about my range? The range going up and down, I can use any range coordinates up to 0, so y cannot equal 0, and y cannot equal 11 over 2. Those are the two numbers that my range cannot be. So I'm going to just So now you need to graph it. So you're going to take your graphing calculator if you have it, and you're going to plug in 
y equals, and I'm going to put my numerator in parentheses, the entire thing. I am only putting in this simplified equation. I'm not putting in the entire equation. I'm only putting in the simplified equation. And I put in my parentheses, and I'm going to get a graph that looks like this. And that looks about right. It is crossing the x-axis, but that's because my horizontal asymptote is at 1, not at the axis. And my vertical asymptote is correctly right at about negative 5. So then when I start graphing, I can go to my table and just start plugging a few numbers in. So I've got 4, 0, which I already have graphed. I've got 0 over here. Let's see. Negative 2, 2, 1, 2, negative 2, 1, 2. So there's a point right there. And negative 4, negative 8. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 8 is down here. So that's going to be this side of the equation. Then for this side of the equation, I'm going to kind of have to go even further negative because i got to get on the other side of the asymptote, which it says error where my asymptote is. So that's good news. That's consistent. Negative 6, 10, which is way up here. I've got a hole at negative 7, but it doesn't know that because I plugged in this. I didn't plug in that. If I plugged in this, then it actually would say error there. And negative 8, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So my graph is going to look like that. Okay. To double check that, you can go ahead and plug in this. This is just a lot more numbers to put in. Okay, moving on, we'll do one more and then um, hopefully that'll help a little bit. So we've got number one, we're going to simplify, we're factoring. We've got the two numbers that multiply to give me five and add to give me four are going to be x minus five, x plus one. When I add negative 5 and positive 1, I get negative 4. When I multiply negative 5 and 1, I'm going to get negative 5. So that works. Out of these two numbers, I can factor out a 2, x plus 1. So now I can simplify and cross these out which is good news except for that means I'm going to have a whole. So I'm left with x minus 5 over 2. Now, just to be clear, if this were a 4, I still could not reduce that. This is in a binomial. They are attached. You cannot reduce those numbers. So this is as good as it gets right here. Number two, my x-intercepts, I'm going to set my numerator equal to zero. Num equal to zero. So x minus five equals zero. X would equal five. So when x is five, y is zero. Then my vertical asymptote is when my denominator is equal to zero. Two cannot be equal to zero. So as a result, there are no vertical asymptotes. So number four, my horizontal asymptotes, bigger on top, bigger on bottom. If it's bigger on top, which this is, this is our bottom, bigger on top, our degree is one here. Bigger on top means no asymptote. And the reason is, is there's no variable down here. So my variable does not have a degree. So since it doesn't have a degree, then it 
it doesn't count. So we've got none for the horizontal asymptote because this is bigger on top, which is no asymptote. Number five, is there a hole? There is a hole right here. X plus one creates a hole because if X was negative one, we would have a problem. This denominator would equal zero and we cannot have that. But the question becomes, what is Y when X is negative one? We're gonna take our equation and plug in negative one for X. And we're gonna get Y equals negative six over two which equals negative three. So when X is negative one, Y is negative three, and there's a big, huge hole right there. Negative one, negative three. Okay, so then let's find our domain. X is gonna be the set of all real numbers where We've got no restrictions here, and we have the one restriction here, so x cannot be negative one. Same with y, because this is our x restrictions. What are the restrictions on y? There's no horizontal restrictions here, but there is the restriction at negative three. So what is this gonna look like on a graph? And here's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this problem is because I think you guys have gotten out of practice graphing lines. And if you look at this, you can just, you may just plug it into your calculator, but this slope is gonna be one half and the y-intercept is going to be two and a half, negative two and a half. So if you go to your graphing calculator and you plug in x minus 5 divided by 2, your graph is going to be a straight line, okay, with a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept of 2 and a half because you've got your slope is 1 over 2 and your y-intercept is negative 5 over 2. And if I look at my table to plot some points, let's say negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 3, negative 4, there's a hole there. Let's see what happens when x is 0. That's negative 2.5, as we kind of said. When x is 1, it's negative 2. So it's a straight line with that big hole down the middle. So it's going to look like this. All right. And you know it's a linear graph because x does not have any exponents, and it's not being divided by any x. Looks all right, hopefully that helped you guys.